This is a podcast about both having autism and living with someone who has autism. My mom is Sonia, and I'm Josh, and this is Josh Has Autism. Hey everybody, welcome to Josh Has Autism. Hello. <clears throat> oh, my voice cracked. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, thank you everybody for hanging out with us. <laughs> Josh, Josh will get himself together here. <laughs> um, I'm good. I'm yeah. good. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> you, got up, you got up early today. I didn't fall asleep last night. What? Yeah. I I didn't really. Oh, I tried and tried and tried and I just didn't fall asleep. Did you? I don't know how to say it. Sometimes you say that you didn't sleep. But I hear you snoring. Oh. <laughs> Do you think that you really didn't sleep or you just don't remember sleeping? I tossed and turned for like five hours. Okay. And then RJ got up and I was up. Yeah. Why'd that happen? Are you thinking about anything or not, feeling? Not particularly. Mm-hmm. I just didn't, I couldn't sleep. Mm. So... We're doing this podcast pretty early in the morning then, aren't we? For you. My goodness, yes. Yes, we usually can't do this until like after one o'clock in the afternoon. And it's like you were here at what? We've already taken the pups for a walk. Yeah. So you got here a long time ago and it's already, it's only what, 9.30. Yeah. So, um, and your sister Bug called with FaceTime so the kids could talk to me. And um, she's like, is that... Josh? <laughs> She's like, what time is it? <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Funny. Um, well, anyways, I'm happy that you're here, and hopefully you can get some sleep tonight. Yeah. Um, I'm happy I'm here too, though. Yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to talk to you about, um, recently we had, so DARS is the place that helps you with getting an education, mm-hmm. um, getting some... Um, referring you to uh, agencies that can help you with life skills mm-hmm. and things like that. So, um, DARS, and that's what it's called here in Virginia. Um, it used to be like Voc Rehab in other places. Yeah. But I think DARS, I'll look it up to make sure, but I think DARS is um, Department for... Um, it's Department for Aging and Rehabilitative Services. That's what it is. Yeah. So, um, anyway. Thank goodness for Google. Yeah, they were. That's what I thought it was, but I wasn't sure. Yeah. So, it makes me sound smarter than I am. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, they had sent somebody over mm-hmm. and. Uh, well, Dars contracted out a, somebody else to come out. Exactly. And. The whole idea was somebody to help you with life skills. Mm-hmm. That was the purpose. Yes. And, and everything had been shut down for a long time, so nobody could come over. We couldn't right. really get things in motion because everything was shut down. Right. So somebody from a different agency that DARS had contracted out for you came mm-hmm. over to the house last week. Mm-hmm. Um, and she was lovely. Yeah. She was just very nice and personable and... She said that she was here to help you with um, um, job coaching. Job coaching. Yeah. And she used to be a life skills coach. Yes. So that was kind of a perfect scenario. Yeah. Well, since then, though, and we had everything set up all the yeah. paperwork, all the, you know, she was going to help you to um, move forward in whatever capacity you wanted to, to yeah. get training or whatever. Yeah. And at the same time, help you with life skills. So then since then, got a phone call from DARS that basically was like, oops, <laughs> we sent the wrong type of coach to you because um, we were trying to find somebody for a life skills coach. And that agency and that particular individual was a job skills coach. And so now that person is not going to be a part of the mix, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Which, and, which honestly, that kind of stinks. 
Because mm-hmm. she was really nice and understanding and everything. Mm-hmm. And like you said, she had the previous experience of, of being a life skills coach as well. Right. Which is what you really want right now and yeah. you really need yeah. at this point in your life. As um, much as I don't like that, yes, it's true. Mm-hmm. And it seems like that's just a constant struggle for you. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, you know, it involves the, the you know, time management. And uh, one of the things that I was, um, I guess I wasn't shocked, but um, I read something recently, and I can't remember the exact percentage, but it, it was below 20% mm-hmm. that adults with autism, less than 20% of them um, have regular jobs. Mm-hmm. And, and what I mean by regular jobs, I mean the hours. Yeah. Not the type of job, but right, you know, right. would, would be working full-time or cons- consistently part-time right. at less than 20%. And the first thing I thought of was that, well... If other folks on the spectrum deal with what you deal with, then the life skills have to happen before the job skills. Yeah. Because the life skills will interfere, or the lack of life skills Mm -hmm. will interrupt your routine and your um, abilities, your perceptions, so that it kind of, you know... Yeah rolls over into the job that you have and yeah. it's not the job itself that you struggle with it's everything else yeah you know what I've noticed what's that is that a lot of my friends that I've had mm-hmm. that actually are on the spectrum mm-hmm. are part of that 20% that are successful so they do work. Yes. Yeah. And I'm I'm happy for them. I'm proud of them for doing that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's frustrating to me to have to say that I don't have a job, that I don't have the necessary skills to live on my own mm-hmm. yeah when so many of my friends are able to did you ever talk to them about that not about that per se mm-hmm. I mean it's I remember it coming up with with one of my friends in Pennsylvania Andrew because mm-hmm. he was also on the spectrum right and uh I remember asking him, "How is it you're able to do all this stuff when you're on the sp- when you're on the spectrum like this, and you're able to have a job, you're able to mm-hmm. have a relationship, and all this other stuff?" And I forget exactly what he said, but it was something along the lines of, "I don't know, I just do it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so it wasn't very helpful, but right. Uh, <laughs> right. So, it it's one of those conundrums that have that has always kind of baffled me, mm-hmm. and frustrated me. Well, our friend Richard, that's been on the podcast mm-hmm. uh, a couple of times, he's a he's one of the um, people that I look to for advice and. Um, his, his interpretation, mm-hmm. he's able to have a, a relationship. He's mm-hmm. married, mm-hmm. Uh, and he's able to... Excuse me. He has a, he has a, went to college, and he's got a job. Yeah. And uh, you know, so he's able to manage all of that. Yeah. And when I asked him about that, what he does is he has a certain... Like, you have a pattern mm-hmm. that kind of dictates how you do things throughout the day. Yeah. He's got a grasp on how to use, I don't know if he would call it a pattern. Right. Routine, maybe. Yes, so that a regimen. That's it. Yes. Yeah. So he has a regimen so that he doesn't forget things because he says it doesn't come 
natural Mm -hmm. so that if he goes out of that regimen, he will forget things. Yeah. So he follows this regimen to get it done. Not only that, when he thinks of something Mm -hmm. that needs to be done, he does it right then. Yeah. Because he said that if he doesn't do it right then, he's going to forget about it. Yeah. And it's not going to get done. Yeah. And I think that happens to you an awful lot where you're in, you think of something, it doesn't get done, and then later on when you realize it wasn't done, then you feel bad about yourself for not getting something done. Yeah. With that said, the opposite is also true, where if I do it right away, I'll forget what I was initially doing, and then I'll have that self-recrimination or whatever. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, and you're working with um, a psychiatrist right now who is just wonderful, and she's really kind of trying to help you to figure out what works for you. She's yeah. actually kind of doing her best to help get you a life coach as well. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, she's the reason I bring her up is because it. N- Things are not just human nature. Things are not just a clear line. Like it's this, you're this, or you're this, or you're this. Like these neat little categories. Mm -hmm. So I don't know which, what part of your makeup, what part of, you know, your diagnosis affects what areas all the time. I just can't point to that and go, oh, that's that. Right. As if that's even necessary, but yeah. it is only t- only when you're trying to pinpoint something and then come up with solutions. Yes. That's when that's helpful. Yes. Um, and I don't know, to this day, what is due to autism, what's due to ADD, what's due to OCD, what's due to anxiety, mm-hmm. um, or depression. Right. Um, because they all interact in, in, with each other. Yes. And I, so I don't know which one yeah. does what. And we're, we're working on, um, understanding that better and, yeah. you know, with, food, with a psychiatrist. But when people go to work, I guess, I guess what I wanted to say too is that everybody's different, whether, but regardless of diagnosis or, or lack of diagnosis it doesn't matter people are different mm-hmm. and, and it's I think that it's not a, a, a healthy thing to judge one person up against another person mm. you know and um, and yet for you so you say that you have your friends that work and have jobs and they have relationships and yeah. most of your friends don't have relationships but some of them do some of them do yes um, and I mean um, romantic relationships yes and, uh, but so they have, what, what a person with autism deals with is not just the nuances of a job that are frustrating anyway. Yeah. Uh, but you have the things that you deal with that I know, or like you're, you're hypersensitive to sound, light, smell, and taste, and touch. Mm-hmm. That's you. Yeah. So all of those things are in play, no matter what it is that you're doing. Right. And so I do, through through all of that, do you, how do you, I don't know, how do you manage those things just day to day? Or you just don't? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, how can I say this best? Um... It's not so much that I manage it as it is that I because I I can't control it. Sure. If it happens, it happens. Mm -hmm. What you mean the the hypersensitivity? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are times where it's much more acute than others. Right. And I can I can't control that. What I can control at times is whether or not I'm stuck in that situation where I have to deal with it. 
Mm-hmm. Well, there's been a lot of times just, you know, about you removing yourself. That's yeah. that's the way that you handle it most of the time. You know, with moving, uh, Nana and Pappy up here, um, you know, your sister bug getting a new house that we're renovating. Yeah. We've been all been over here eating together at the same time. Yeah. A lot lately. Yeah. And I noticed that you just leave. You just go into another the, room. Another yeah. room and lay down and, you know. Yeah. Because it's just too much activity. Yeah. And sometimes it's worse than others. Sometimes it's okay. Sometimes it's like yeah. a really positive, great feeling of all being together. And then sometimes it's like, Please leave me alone. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So um, I get that. But the thing about the life skills that if we felt like I felt anyway, like you were so close, like this person was here. Yeah. And you're going to get this done. And things are opening up. So you're going to start volunteering at a library or a museum. Or something similar. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where you're going to start and then and then take the steps after that. Yeah. But one of the things that made me think about all of that is that here's this life coach or this job coach that was here. Mm-hmm. So close. Finally here. And then she's gone. Yeah. It's it, it's frustrating to say the least, you know? Because, mm-hmm. I mean, it's like... It's like... We get that phone call saying, Oops, we made a mistake. When it, when it was, when it seemed like everything was okay and it didn't need to be changed. Mm-hmm. Because of her previous experience and everything. Well, right. Yeah. Uh, what you're saying is that, well, wait a second. If they're not, if they're not contracting for a job coach, but they're contracting for a life skills coach, and that's what she used to do, why can't she just do it? Well, the thing is that that's not her job anymore. She That's shifted true. from That's that being true. her job to a different position. Yeah. So she, she can't do that anymore. But right. the reason that it's so important, I would say more than ever, to get that type of person in your life is because you've just told me, you know, we did this this trial for a while now where you have been living with RJ. Mm-hmm. And you've come to me recently and said that you want to move back home. Yes. And why is that? Because I wanted to try and push myself to see if I could live on my own yet. Mm-hmm. And I'm not ready for that. What's happening? Honestly, not enough. It's... I am not... Uh, I, sorry. I am not really... Our neighbor never cuts their grass. And then now, right now, they just started up a lawnmower. So, (laughs) sorry if you guys can hear that. (laughs) Sorry if you can hear that. But Um, I can't turn this off, the the recording off, because I don't know how to do it. I I know how to turn it off, but then I might lose it. So, hopefully the lawnmower is not too loud. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I had a, there's a connection that I'm looking at that I'm seeing like right in front of me. Mm-hmm. This, these are life skills that are not coming together. Mm-hmm. A life skills coach that's not there yet. And you trying to live on your own and saying, I'm not able to do this. Right. And to me, they're all, it's the same. Yeah. It's the same. It's, yeah. it's the fact that you, the life skills are not there. Um, and so you're doing what you've always done, which is functioning as a person without life skills. Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Um, I'm not happy about it. About which part? Not being able to function right. Not Uh, function right, but just be able to... It's depressing. It's, it is what it is. It's. I mean, I'm almost 33 years old. Holy moly. I know, right? Mm-hmm. And yet, I'm having trouble remembering to take a shower. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, and it it's just really... <sighs> it's frustrating, it's depressing, and... <laughs> to quote Monty Python... Mm-hmm. I don't want to talk to you no more, you empty-headed animal food trough wiper. I don't even know what you just said. <laughs> but, but I don't know. I don't know what you said. It, <laughs> the, the, um, the, the thing about this that I'm wondering about is that are you aware that you're not doing things that would be beneficial for you to do? Like taking a shower, there's a lot of reasons, and you know, from the time we were little, we've talked about all those. Just to be. It's. And it's not just because other people are affected by that. It's more along the lines of other things happen or don't happen. Like, how can I explain it? Like for example, in the morning, let's say let's say that I get a call from you or dad, say, so, "Hey, we need you to help out at the house." Mm-hmm. Okay. Let me let me get changed and I'll be right over, so mm-hmm. I don't take a shower. Right. And I don't like taking showers at night. Right. So I I think, hey, I'm gonna take it in the morning. Mm-hmm. Next morning, get a phone call. Hey, could you help out at the house? Okay, let me get changed. No, right, right. And then the next day, let's say I'm not working with you guys. Uh, I wake up at 2 in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And it's like, where did the time go? Are you aware of that? Like, if you, when you wake up and it's so Uh, late. It's, oh my gosh, the other day I woke up at 4.30. Wow. And I thought it was like 11. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm like, what the heck? How did this happen? Right, right. And that's not... Uh, I I do understand that when you don't have a routine, um, it's hard for you to do anything routine. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. And so, what can... Is there anything that you found... Well... It's having a routine that I can do consistently Mm -hmm. that I am having an issue with because there's so many unforeseen circumstances that that will throw off the routine Uh, say it again there are things that happen that will throw off my routine that make it so that whenever the routine is thrown off Mm -hmm. the routine doesn't happen Mm -hmm. well it's not it's not um and and it's 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 not the full routine Mm -hmm. it's like parts of it i have to shave off to be able to because like taking my medicine i have to do that Mm mm-hmm and so, I remember to take my medicine, and sometimes I remember deodorant. Mm-hmm. But, it, like, with the example of, of me coming over to help out of the house, I get changed, put on deodorant, and the, the spray stuff, and then that's after I take my medicine. Mm-hmm. Because that's the first thing I do, because if I don't do it, I forget it. Your medicine? Yeah. Yeah, right, right. And that's been, like, drilled into your head forever, right? Yeah. That if you have been prescribed medicine and you have found that it helps you, um, then it's important that you take that when you're supposed to take it. Yeah. Because uh, that's always been the thing about the medicine. How does it make you feel? Does it help? Does it does it make you feel whatever? Right, you know? right. Because if it doesn't, because there have been medications out there that have blunted my emotions. Correct. That have blunted 
my my capacity for things. Oh, excuse me. Yes, I remember that. I yes. And there were some I, that just made me crazy. Kind of bounce off the walls, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So the thing is that that you've said that you wanted to move back home and that you feel like what you were hoping you would accomplish there, you didn't accomplish. Yeah. And um, we did this thing where I tried to step back and just um, not be so involved in your day-to-day life because, um, honestly, it became something that was too exhausting for me. Yeah. Um, and I could only say so many things so many times and and then feel like, what's the point? Right. And I don't mean that about you. I mean that about that part of our relationship. Right, it's right. It's just not, you know. It wasn't okay. But it's not okay either that, I get it. We're in a pandemic. A lot of people slept till the afternoon. You know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of people's lives were turned upside down. The difference for you is that you liked it. <laughs> like, you know, you, you it's that falls right into, you know, I don't have to. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, I. The perfect example of that. Thank you. Is. Like, yeah, oh, geez, not an example of that, but a, a good example. Okay. Of that kind of thing uh-huh. is what you is what you've been telling me to write about. I've been yes, yes. I've been. Now this is something you're very, very good at. Yeah. Is writing and being completely real with your experience, and I, I that's I mean that's why we do the podcast. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It, it's it's like um you know you're you're so eloquent in expressing yourself at times and even when it doesn't come out smoothly you're able to share what it's like having autism yeah and how that affects you yeah um it's so yes i've been encouraging you to write the real stuff don't worry about what you think other people want right. to hear or what's acceptable. Right. Write your truth. Right. And uh, the po- the point that I was saying though was that was that uh you had been you had been urging me to uh, write about uh, at least in part about my experience about what was different or the same about uh, COVID-19 mm-hmm. affecting our lives. Mm-hmm. And your point was that it doesn't. <laughs> right. <laughs> it, that it's almost like my ideal holiday. <laughs> it's like a dream come true. <laughs> yes. And, yeah. and we've, been, we've been blessed enough that we have not had to directly deal with COVID-19. Correct. We've had, we've had some family, we've had family and friends that have had it and, and, um, but no, no direct contact. Correct. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm saying that just for clarity's sake, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but, my experience is that it's not been that hard of a thing for me. Mm-hmm. Well, for you, it's like, oh, wait, we got to stay away from people? Awesome! Well, it's, <laughs> oh, it's, it's more like, yeah. well, what changed? Right, yeah. Well, what changed is that people wear masks over their faces so you don't have to try to interpret what they're... It made it so much harder. Did it? Oh my gosh. Because a lot of the social cues that I've learned Mm -hmm. are from facial expressions. Right. Yes, that's true. Wow. I thought it would make it easier. It It doesn't, It it does in a way. Mm Mm-hmm. 
but at the same time, it, it makes it harder. So you've learned to rely so much on the very thing that didn't come natural to you through all the years of, of teaching yeah. and learning that. Yeah. Now it's become, I didn't, wow, that's, that's the opposite of what I thought. Yeah. I, yes, I thought that it would be easier for you because you don't have to try to, to see what people were. Right. Uh, um, their expressions. Right. Well, it's kind of like talking on the phone versus text message. Mm -hmm. In a text message, you can send someone a joke, mm -hmm. but the other person might not get that it's a joke. Oh, right. Mm hmm which is why it's great that there's emotes and stuff yep. like that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they could be using them sarcastically and this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. Whereas talking on the phone, there's inflections in the voice mm -hmm. that can either indicate whether they're using sarcasm or if they're laughing mm -hmm. while they're saying it mm -hmm. or just little nuances in their voices. Mm -hmm. And that's made even easier whenever you can see their faces at the same time. You know, it's interesting to me when you say that because there are times when now the inflections you might get, it's the words themselves that you don't know. Like there are times even in conversation where you don't know if, if it's required a response. Right, right. Um, or you don't know if somebody is is done talking not like oh you've gone on and on and on are you done yet but <laughs> but that uh but that you excuse me that you don't, i don't i don't recognize when would be an appropriate time to have a little thing saying uh-huh uh-huh mm -hmm. right those are things you have to constantly think about yes mm -hmm. which is what we're talking about too is that this overload that you have from the very beginning even before you were to get into a relationship mm -hmm. or have a job. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's this this all of these layers that you go through yeah. before you get to the actual thing yeah. that's being asked of you. Right. It's kind of like let's say the job itself mm -hmm. is the race. Mhm. Mm but to get to that race, you have to do the 100 meter dash with hurdles. <laughs> Right, right. For yeah. every thing, single step. Mm -hmm. And it's... Well... Beca yeah. Because if even one of those trip me up, mm -hmm. that's another amount of time that it's added to the, to the uh, time it takes me to understand something. Right. Yes, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. And Which is a, actually a really good al illusion, or or whatever it's called, because in uh, like hundred meter with hurdles, whenever you're in in uh, hundred meter dashes and stuff, mm -hmm. every time that you go over a hurdle and you touch it, it it's, it's supposed to add another like point five seconds. Oh, I'll get it. It's like an analogy. Yeah. Right. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Right, and so. We, we know this about you. We know that you have these struggles. Yeah. Um, and a part of, regardless of, of the struggles, it's got to be that you want things to be different in order for them to be different. Yeah. Because it's not, nothing's going to change if you don't focus that direction. Right. And... One of the things that I that you say that you want to move home, mm -hmm. you 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 tried living out um, on your own and with with support, mm -hmm. and that's you're feeling like that's not something that you wanted that you're it. I don't think I don't feel that it was successful at this time, mm -hmm. and so. We can't go back, <clears throat> excuse me, the way that it was before. Right. Um, that was too much stress on you. Yeah, like the, you know, 
for me, the Verge is the one like bat poop crazy, right? <laughs> like, it's, I can't take this anymore. Throw a sandwich. So, <laughs> so, so, what I feel like, you know, there's got to be, we can't just go back, you just can't, we can't go back into the right. pattern that we had before. Right. I understand what you're saying, and I want for you to be uh, healthy mm-hmm. and happy and productive. And, uh, but, um, that has to be something that, you know, hopefully we'll get the, the life skills coach on board here. But, yeah. um, I feel like e- I can't live with you if you're sleeping until 430, 430. <laughs> I can't do that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and I feel like regardless of whether or not that person is involved or not, um, now that things are opening up, um, we should, and I will go with you, we should go places to see if there's volunteer opportunities. Okay. For you to get up and get out of the house mm-hmm. and um, have a routine. Yeah, yeah. Um, because again, you say that a routine helps you more than anything else to stay disciplined and to have a a, a plan for every day if yeah. you don't have something then you just don't do anything right it's another aspect of that mm-hmm. is that I just don't like my whenever I don't have things planned planned out ahead of time mm-hmm. I don't pay attention to the time for example mm-hmm. and I know what you're talking about because um, before when I was on stage every single weekend mm-hmm. you could say a date mm-hmm. months in the future mm-hmm. and I could tell you what day of the week it was yeah. because I was always on my calendar yeah, yeah. scheduling this gig here on these dates and this gig on this date. So I, you know, I was aware. Now, I couldn't tell you, you know. I don't don't even know what today is. Uh, what? (laughs) (laughs) I think it's Wednesday. It is Wednesday. It is? It is Wednesday. Okay. Um, let's see, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16th. It's the 16th. Is it? Yeah. Um. Yeah, it is. So. Okay. Yes, so I do understand that. You know, Nana says she days run together for her. Yeah, yeah. You know, because she doesn't. She doesn't have much to do right now, other than just get her healing get, and yeah. you know, right, right. Yeah. So, yeah, so I I get what you're saying about that, and I feel like your days would you would be better off if you were volunteering someplace, if you were doing something productive. Right, because... On a regular basis. On a regular basis, yes. That's the key. Mm-hmm. Because without something on a regular basis, mm-hmm. my life falls apart. Mm-hmm. Because there's no time frame for things. And when you... Like, there's no concept of time whenever there's nothing planned. Right. And when you were over there, seeing how this would work out for you, did... Did you ever think about planning something out or making something happen on a regular basis so that... Yeah. Never happened. Okay. I thought about it, but it just never happened. Mm -hmm. Especially once things shut down. You know? Well, yeah, that influenced everything, didn't it? Yeah. Um, so, the, the... The life skills, uh, I do understand you're tapping your, are you done? Are you kind of wiped out? A little bit. Yeah? Okay. We can, we can wrap it up then. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay then. Um, I do have a pet peeve. Hmm. My pet peeve is that, um, if the dishwasher is dirty and people go over to the counter. And leave it there on the counter. Yeah. Yeah. And just sit their dirty stuff on the counter yeah. instead of putting it in the dishwasher. Yeah. 
That makes me so frustrated. I put your your dirty plate in the dishwasher. Thank you. Yeah, from from your breakfast. Thanks. Yeah, I rinsed it off and then put it in there. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but so. I think I left my cup out though. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Do you have a pet peeve? Me? Yeah. You have. A lot. <laughs> Which one? Which one? Um, what situation would you so, like? So, living together, again, mm-hmm. I'm saying to you, the bread. I'm not going to be okay. The bread. Oh, the bread. The bread. Okay. I cannot stand it when people li- leave just the end piece and then take the next piece and, and the piece after that. Right. Because then the bread doesn't match up with the piece after that. Right. And it it just frustrates the heck out of me because then, not only that, but then people just keep on taking from beyond the end piece. So like in the middle. Until there's two end pieces left. And what happens when there's two end pieces? I have to eat it. Uh. Because I'm usually the one who who ends up eating it. Mm. But, uh... Your dad actually likes the end pieces. Then he should eat the end he, pieces. Well, this, that's what I'm saying. Don't eat the end pieces. Oh. Your dad will eat them. I think that the person you're talking about is me. <laughs> <laughs> because, yes, and, I, and I've and i learned this from you, you know, before, but, yes, you, if you there's the end piece, there's a piece next to it. Mm-hmm. You can't take the piece next to it. Right. You can't take that one and the one behind it. Right. Because then by the time you get the end piece and that piece of bread, they don't match up. Yeah. And it's just it's it's It uh, makes it a lot more difficult for the for sandwich to be made. Mhm. Yeah. And so right. Okay. And, so and it irks me. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's just like erg. Yeah. 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 Uh. All right. So you'll put your dirty dishes in the dirty dishwasher. Mhm. And I won't take the piece Next to the end piece. <laughs> or the piece two, next two past the end piece. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good deal. It's a start. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Yeah. The only issue I foresee mm-hmm. is knowing if the dishwasher is clean or dirty. There's a little thing on there now that says clean or dirty. Hmm. And um, we'll make sure that whoever runs the dishwasher, when they start it, they'll move it to clean. Oh, okay. So we'll, we will rely on that. Okay. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. So what's different too now is that you coming back home, it's not just us anymore. Right. There's Nana and Pappy and um, Bean. Yeah. Their little Bichon. Yeah. And um, as soon as we can find people that can do the things for the addition. Yeah. um, We're kind of... Stuck all together. Yes, but yeah. we're trying. They're going to have like you know, kind of like a mother-in-law suite over there. Yeah. But for the time being, everybody's together. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Last question. Don't be my last question because I know you look you look pretty wiped out. Yeah. Um. I guess we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I suppose I'm still thinking that way too. Yeah. <laughs> like me living with him, I'm like, oh, I guess we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, okay, so I think what what's going to be helpful mm-hmm. is um, if, you're, if you're feeling comfortable with this, how about if, um, if today we look up some volunteer opportunities okay. to get you out and doing, like, beginning a routine? Okay. All right. Okay, good. Yeah. We'll report back next week. All right. Yeah. All right. Hey, everybody, thanks so much for listening and hanging out with us again. Um, we're so happy that we're back. And because we missed that chunk of time, because life was just bonkers. Yeah. Um, if you could give us five stars, that helps us to be seen, helps us to um, other people to find us, and that would be so appreciated. Yeah. Um, you can go to our, uh, my website. It's sonyaking.com, S-O-N-Y-A-K-I-N-G. Dot com that would be awesome yeah and um, yeah send us any um, any uh, 
podcast ideas if you have any, any questions you have, any thoughts, um, experiences. We love hearing from you. Yeah. So anyways, I hope everybody's happy and healthy out there, and we will talk with you next week. Love you. Bye.